Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. In the last part we did a deep dive into the Pokeathlon and Trainer ID card levels and now we're checking our Pokemon storage system because it's time for another event Pokemon. This action replay code after pressing some amount of buttons I forget actively places Shaman in your first box's first slot make sure that's empty before you do it. Shaman is another one you only really got from events mythical wise in main gen 4. I wasn't originally going to showcase it, but there's technically a bit of text that it has that's a minor event, so I might as well talk about it. Shaman is a grass flying type at the moment in its sky form, so it's weak to flying, poison, rock, fire, and ice. Ice is a 4 times weakness, but it is immune to ground. Very high special attack and speed, and it has an okay learn set on top of it. It's the rare grass type I'd say is a really good attacker, bar none. The thing is, Shaman also has a bit of a gimmick. And it involves the item slash event you can grab as long as it's in your party in the first slot here in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And to do that, we want to head over to the flower shop here in Goldenrod. Wow, well, how cute! Where'd you get that oh so cute Pokemon? Shaman, is it? It's so cute. I know. Let me give it a flower. I have just the one for it. And this is how you get the Gracidia. The thing is with Shaman, and I'm about to do a very clever little uh, jump cut to show this, is that it has two forms, land and sky. Land form is what we're now seeing, this cute little hedgehog. If you use the Gracidia on it during the daytime, it'll turn back into its sky form. But whenever you put it into a box, or it's nighttime, or it gets frozen, it reverts to land form. Land form is a pure grass, meaning it's weak against flying, poison, bug, fire, and ice. And it doesn't really got any weaknesses. It's got hundreds on all of its stats, which also means it doesn't have any real strengths, but it's still overall useful. Sky form, I'd say, is the better thing. Because I also forgot to mention, it's also got good HP and attack on top of that. But if you ever want to turn it into its opposite form, just use the Gracidia or get it frozen or put it into the box, whatever. It's cute, it has uses, uh, but this is all we're going to showcase with it. Also, you might notice, some of these Game Shark, or these action replay codes are much longer than the one for the Enigma Stone to get the opposite Lati. I think that's because they're actively influencing more data than just giving, uh, hitting a flag to showcase an item in the, uh... Market, that's the word. And now, uh, it's time for item collection, but, a uh, bit of a disclaimer. I recorded the item collection in two sessions. Uh, prior to Goldenrod through Johto, and then Goldenrod beyond in Johto. You might notice we're starting in Goldenrod. Remember how I said I accidentally saved over the footage of the Kanto Gym Leader rematches and had to re-record that? Same deal here. I saved over the original take of me going through the areas prior to Goldenrod in Johto to re-grab all the items I've missed. And I don't want to re-record that because, frankly, I'm not sure if I have a save state for that outright, like I did the Kanto Gym Leaders. Which sucks, but uh, oh well. The main items of note that I'm going to highlight that I missed. Uh, you can get the Mystic Water in Cherry Grove City and the Water in the West, which boosts your water type moves from a certain uh, NPC over there. Uh, and in Slowpoke Well, if you have Surf and, I think, Strength, you can access a lower floor of it now where you can get the Rain Dance TM, as well as a King's Rock to evolve certain Pokemon. There's also a little side quest you can do with the sleeping NPC just west, uh, just east of Cherry, uh, not Cherry, but Violet City. And it starts here in Goldenrod. We can get this Spiro with Mail uh, to give to that guy, and we can get a TM out of it. I would re-record it, but frankly, at this point, I just want to get this project done. We're... 43 parts in. I'm working on editing part 44 between takes on the vocal track for this one. It's a mess. Yeah, we can show this particular Pokemon to this guy. You get Spearow into your Pokedex for free, and we get some TM out of this. Now, I want to say it's like Snore. Now, that or Sleep Talk. I could have done this way earlier in the LP, I just didn't. Oh no, it's rest! Uh, yeah, I guess that's useful enough. Mm, not my playstyle, but it's useful. So, for a lot of the item collection, for what's past Goldenrod at least, we're just gonna be speeding up and playing music like it's an optional thing. 
because I didn't want this video to be 45 minutes of me jump cutting with other stuff in between. 32 minutes of me jump cutting with stuff in between though. That's the good shit. By and large, the main reason that there's a lot of item collection you might have to do in Johto, even if you were as clean with me grabbing items as I was throughout uh, the latter half of it or so, is mostly because you need rock climb for a surprising amount of items located throughout the area, including some evolution stones, like we're using rock climb here in the National Park, uh, grabbing, I think like it's a PP Max, just southeast of Dark Caves, Route 46 exit. Uh... Two items near the, the ranch, we're actually going to take a moment to actually focus on that for a second as well in a moment. Uh, because you might remember, eons ago, we saw that this mill tank is weak. I now have the requisite amount of Orin Berries to feed it and heal it to get the key item from one of these girls next to it. Is this a real long time to do this in the LP? Yes. Could I have done it sooner? Probably. Did I? Uh, no. Just straight up no. Not that doing this is super key. Uh, I find doing the equivalent task to this in uh, main Gen 4 is not only easier, but you basically do it along the way. Because Miltank's now totally healthy. Shocking, I really want to give you some seals, but you don't have a seal case. But don't you worry, my sister can give you one. Thank you, Moo Moo's totally healthy again. I'll give you the seal case for your trouble. The seal case, you can get seals from various NPCs throughout the game, like this girl's sister, and uh, there's one in a house on the northeast of Olivine, I think, that can give you some more. That you can place on a Pokeball at the PC box to have it play a special animation when you throw it out, sort of to customize your uh, Pokeballs. In main Gen 4, where seals are a lot more available, this is more interesting. Here in Heart Gold Soul Silver, it really is kind of an afterthought. There's not many places you can get them, and not many you can get, period, at all, barring like some amount you can get every day of the week or something like that. The more important reason to do this is to get TM83, which is a natural gift, which, in the right hands, is ridiculously powerful. And you can also now buy Moo Moo Milk rather regularly here, and it's pretty cheap to get. You have to buy it, I think, in dozens at a time, but it's worth it for healing items if you can do this super early in the game. Admittedly, I was actually dreading recording the footage for the item collection, fully because for as little locations as there are in the game, there are plenty of sub-areas I could have easily missed items, but it went by surprisingly quickly. Helping factors, there weren't many places I couldn't grab items in Kanto at the time, because there's nowhere near as many rock climb walls even in that area overall. Most of them are in Diglett's Cave and... Rock Tunnel. You can grab most of the items in Kanto on your first trip there because you'll have most of the HMs at that point to begin with, so not much backtracking. That's one plus I can give the Kanto section. Unfortunately, most of the items we're going to be getting around here are things we already have plenty of, like elixirs, uh, rare candies, stuff like that. The rare candies are probably the most useful thing out of those, if only because I can use them to level up before the final thing we do. We can also get Sludge Bomb here, which I mentioned uh, eons ago, uh, just north of Mahogany Town. And also I missed a Pokemon Trainer. The most- oh, that's right, you also couldn't do much on Cinnabar Island. I almost forgot about this one. Most of the items I'd say you can get here are going to be more useful either when you're grinding for money from the Elite Four or doing anything competitive lies, because that's where I find the base stat boosting items like the Carboses and all those much more useful. Because by this point, there's not much for me to get in the LP anymore. There's not much for me to do. I'm not doing the endless grind, so... Eh. Oh, I guess there was the Magma Riser there, though, so you, if you want to get a Magma Mortar, you have to go explore Cinnabar Island as well, I guess. And a few items I missed in Mount Silver Cave as well. Also, speed up theme for this part is Boon Trussell uh, from Undertale. I literally just finished that about 12 hours ago. I don't know why I waited this long to do it. I, that, that was amazing. I can't wait to start playing Deltarune. Expect those VODs, uh, at least of Undertale, on the channel probably by the time this is uploaded. <laughs> I'll probably try to get that up uh, after Resident Evil Code Veronica finishes up. Ooh, a rock incense. I won't use that. 
So with item collection basically wrapped up, uh, because again, not re-recording that first half, uh, use Bilbopedia, I guess, if you're super curious. I tried my best, but I, I don't want to re-record a good hour of footage just of grabbing items. Like, the gym leaders is an hour of footage I can understand wanting to grab again. Mm, not just grabbing items over and over again. With the item collection just about over, you might be wondering what's next. Well, there's two major events that are worth showing off still. And the first one, by using this code on an action replay, you can get Arceus. Arceus is the strongest Pokemon in all of existence. It's a normal type to start, so it's weak against fighting immune to Ghost. But by using any of the plates you can find in Main Sinnoh, or by doing the SS Aqua Trips over and over again, you can change its type, which also changes some amount of its base stats, I believe. At least when it comes to its Pokeathlon stats. Every single one of Arceus' stats is 120. It can do anything, it can learn just about any move you'd want it to, and with its main move Judgment that can change type as well, depending on what plate it's holding, this Pokemon is just straight up god, both balancing wise and literally in lore. Oh, hi there. Ah. Are you okay? I was in a hurry and... Sorry, did I hurt you? No way. Could it be a Pokemon from Sinnoh? The one they call Arceus. No, oh, could it be Arceus causing all this? I cannot explain it any other way. Arceus may be the key to solving the mystery of the unknown and the ruins of Alf? Can you come to the ruins of Alf with me? Please, you must. I'm trembling with excitement. I think something's about to happen. Okay, God. Hmm. I've been studying the ruins for many years, but something feels... different. Wow! The unknown picture's on the wall! It feels like they're staring at me. Okay... What is this? There's something eerie that's making my legs shiver. I can't stop them. Oh, God. Anyone else feel tired all of a sudden? Where are we? Uh... This isn't right, but I should note this happens if you bring an event Arceus to, ruin, to the Ruins of Elf. The one you were meant to get with a certain flute that was never implemented in main Gen 4 would do this as well. Well, hello. It's so freezing, isn't it? For a youngster like you to be interested in the Sinjo Ruins is not something we see every day. Take a look at them. From the design of the pillars at Sinjo Ruins, you can see that the cultures of Sinnoh and Johto have blended. What was I thinking? We don't need to be standing here. Why don't you come to the cabin around the corner for more discussion? Sure thing. But if we check the Poke Gear at this point, Sinjo Ruins are aptly named because we are north of Main Johto, which is roughly where the Sinnoh region is meant to be. Uh, just about. By the way, we happen to have a person at the cabin. Any trainer should know who she is. The famous trainer from Sinnoh. She's traveling around to study myths and ancient ruins. Isn't that something? Sure, uh, who do you mean? Oh. Oh. A long time ago, people used to draw life from Pokemon and also give their lives to those Pokemon. That shows that people and Pokemon used to be more closely bonded with each other. When the people moved from place to place, the myths and legends of Pokemon and the power would be also be carried with those people. That's how myths and legends from each region are blended with each other. The ancient ruins here have inherited the legends from both the ruins of Valf in Johto and the Spear Pillar in Sinnoh. That's the proof that people from Johto and Sinnoh blended together as a group. And this Abra and Old Man are here to teleport you back in the case you want to, for some reason. Uh, the main thing you're gonna want to do, and I do this in a jump cut coming up, for- to do what we want to do here in the Sinjo Ruins, you're gonna want to have every Pokémon that's not Arceus stored away in the PC box. My name is Cynthia. I'm a Pokémon trainer. The Sinjo Ruins remind me of Sinnoh, where I come from. Initially, I thought it was because it snows a lot here as well, but that was not it. 
A long time ago, people came from Sinnoh to live here. They must have built a temple here while longing for home. That's why we call these the Sinjo Ruins. You are... a Pokemon trainer? I can sense strong power coming from your Pokeball. I feel a familiar presence. The power of Dialga. Palkia. Or could it be Giratina? It's similar, but not quite the same. Have you got time? Can you come to the Sinjo Ruins with me? Call it a trainer's intuition. When you and your Pokémon step into that stage, something will happen. Alright, so store everything that's not Arceus away, and let's go see what's going on at the Ruins with Cynthia. Alright, this is probably one of my favorite events in Pokémon history, and I'm really sad you really can't access this nowadays without some form of cheating device. This is the mystery stage. The mythical stage built to show respect for Arceus. It is said that people used to celebrate its magnificent might with music and dance. Some people in Johto still pass down this tradition. According to an ancient document, time, space, and antimatter, or what combined we call the world, shall be born when Arceus stands on the mystery stage. This is where one might say the lead enters the mystery stage at last. All my study of ruins in Pokemon mythology in Sinnoh may have been to bring you up on this stage here today. Depicted on the mystery stage of the Pokemon that shaped this world. The circle in the middle is Arceus, the origin of it all. This is the pattern that represents Palkia, the master of space and dimensions. This is the pattern that represents Dialga, the Guardian of Time. This is the pattern that represents Giratina, the ruler of the world that is on the opposite side of ours, the world of antimatter. Arceus has accepted you as a trainer. Arceus, having shaped the world, is said to show you a glimpse of its true power. The power possibly making life appear out of nothing. It seems that something will happen when you choose one of the circles. You'll want to be well prepared. So, you have a choice to make. Depending on which circle you stand in, you're gonna, you're gonna get a level 1 variant of one of the main three Sinnoh legendaries. They'll also all have their respective orb equipped from the start, the Adamin, Lustrous, or Garicius orb. Personally, I'm going to choose Giratina, the ruler of the Distortion World, because thematics. Prepare for some wild shit.
that terrified me at age like 13, that still creeps me out at age 25. Nothing else in Pokemon is ever like that. That shining sphere, could it be an egg? Do we just witness the very moment an egg was brought to this world? A moment no one has ever seen? An egg is the cradle of every being. This planet itself is an egg in a sense. Life that comes from an egg will come to an end in due course. To begin anew. That may be what Arceus wanted to show us. That was... We seem to be surrounded by that strong power again. What the... Oh, are you alright? You disappeared right in front of me. And that made me so surprised. I see. The power of Arceus and Unknown affected each other and created a huge energy, which sent you to the Sinjo Ruins? Unknown, the ruins of Alf and Arceus. The mystery deepens. It's made me even more inquisitive. I'll one day solve all the mysteries. Good luck, man. We're still trying to piece together lore stuff like Legends Arceus gave us a whole lot more. So let's talk about the legendaries you can get here. I got Giratina here, which is holding its Grisius Orb, which powers up its dragon and ghost type moves and turns it into its origin form where it has Levitate as its ability. Otherwise, if it's not holding that, it has Pressure as its ability. Ghost Dragon type, so it's weak to Ghost, Ice, Dragon, Dark, and eventually Fairy. Uh, but it's immune to normal fighting and at least if it's in its origin form, ground. Very high HP. In its altered form when it's not holding the Grisius Orb, it has very high defense stats and good stats otherwise. In its origin form, its attack stats are swapped for that. But now it's time for us to move on to our next event. By coming over here, we get a Celebi by using this code. I'll talk more about the other two legendaries from Sinnoh in a few moments. For now, let's talk about Selby. Selby is a psychic grass type and the last Pokemon in the Johto Pokedex. Weak to flying, poison, bug, ghost, fire, ice, and dark. When bugs are four times weakness, you're kind of in trouble. It has a hundred as every stat, but from memory, it just doesn't have that good of a learn set overall. It's adorable, but not very useful, especially compared to a lot of other legendaries. But if we take it over to the shrine in Elex Forest, Something a little different happens. Uh, Lyra appears. Hi, there. Hi, Kyle. Have you ever heard the legend of the shrine? They say that people disappear when they tamper with it. Okay, I just went through some weird blackouts. Don't start making me white out again. What was that? Oh man, I shouldn't have eaten that third burrito, what the hell? Why are we in Kanto? Where are we? Elex Forest has disappeared! That's not it, it's more like we've been transported somewhere else? Kyle, something is strange. I heard the radio mentioning the date from three years ago. Is that... am I looking at... Celebi? That explains it. Selby must have caused all of this. My grandpa once told me that Selby can travel through time using its mystical power called time travel. No! Selby must have taken us back in time. Literally. Kyle, there's someone else here besides us. Let's go find out who. Alright. Uh, uh, Silver? And Oh my. You told me. You were number one in the world. Are you gonna quit? What are you going to do now? One must one's defeat before he can move on. I will go solo, for now. So that one day I'll form a stronger organization. What aspect of you was number one? Gathering so many only to be defeated by a mere child? Putting together the potential of many is how you produce a huge power. That's what an organization is. That's the strength of an organization. I failed to make the best use of my subordinate's potential. 
But you shall witness one day the revival of me and my Team Rocket. I don't understand you. You don't make any sense. One day you will understand. I don't want to understand you. I'll never become somebody like you. A coward when you're alone and acting like a tyrant when you're in front of other cowards. I'll become strong. I'll become a stronger man all by myself. All by myself! Uh, uh, hi. Hi. What are you staring at? Uh, nothing. Who does he think he is? That was unnecessary. But what were they talking about? The revival of Team Rocket? They say that Team Rocket was removed from the Kanto region by a child three years ago. So this really is three years ago. Oh boy, uh, not again. No, oh no, what's happening again? It's Selby's time travel. <laughs> the room from Tojo Falls? I don't know why you've come here. Anyway, I have to warn you that this is not a place for kids like you. Huh? That's the guy we just saw arguing with that boy. You have a certain look. It reminds me of the kid who stood in front of me three years ago. You have the same eyes. I'm on my way to Goldenrod City to answer the call and join my team. Are you going to get in my way? Three years ago, Goldenrod City? Could this be the one that the radio was trying to reach? Giovanni, their boss? Do you hear a crowd? The radio is saying something strange. Team Rockets occupied the radio tower at Goldenrod City. It can't be- Kyle, you solved this case already. This is the radio tower. This is the radio tower. We are pleased to declare Team Rocket's revival. Giovanni, can you hear us? We've finally made it. My old associates need me. We will not repeat the failure of three years ago. Team Rocket will be born again, and I will rule the world! Turn of an old rival, indeed. Giovanni starts off by throwing out his Nido King. Poison point for its ability, so be careful with physical attack, Shadow Claw, Focus Energy, Fury Attack, and Double Kick. Uh, with that said, you might notice there's a little bit of a level discrepancy here. Now, for all the shit I'll give the level curve of the main game with how Kanto's laid out, I get why they want the events to potentially be around these levels, because they don't know when you're going to be able to first do them. I think at the most you need to have beaten the Elite Four in Lance to do this event, but you might be lower level, so this one could be a hard thing if you do it as soon as you can. Next up, we got his Kangaskhan, scrappy for its ability, so its normal type moves, all, all one of them that can actually do damage, can hit ghost types, outrage, leer, sucker punch, and dizzy punch. Dizzy Punch in particular is said. Normal type move. Uh, decent power, high accuracy. Uh, despite call it being called Dizzy Punch, it took until Gen 2 for it to have a chance to confuse the target. Next up, we got his Nido Queen. Poison point for its ability once again, so be careful with physical attacks if you've got any you're using for some reason. Crunch, Roar, Earth Power, and Super Power. I'd argue this is overall the hardest member of his team, barring his next member but it's also like his next member is the most recent Pokemon in his entire team. 
with his Needle Queen out of the way, he's gonna be throwing out his last team member, his Haunch Crow. Super luck for its ability, so critical heads are more likely. Nasty Plot, Swagger, Dark Pulse, and Shadow Ball. What in the world was that? Don't tell me some inexperienced kid can possibly be that strong. You have experience with this exact thing, Giovanni! You lost to Red like two or three times, man. Losing to me really shouldn't be that shocking. Hell, I'm higher level than he was at this point back in the Fire Red LP. And that's Giovanni. Kind of a disappointing fight, honestly. What in the world are you? At least disappointing for the time I did the event. How is this possible? The past three years have been a waste? How can a kid like you manage to destroy my dream once again? The precious dream of Team Rocket has become little more than an illusion. Hey, where's Giovanni gone? I wonder if he's listening to our broadcast. They keep calling for their boss. I feel sorry they don't know he's not coming. After this, Kyle, you'll defeat them. Uh, wait a second. Kyle, you're still here. Then who will defeat Team Rocket? Time travel. Not again. I've had enough. Please let me go back to my time. Traveling through time sure doesn't feel good. Hey, my Meryl! I missed you so much! Oh, wait a sec, so we must be back to our time. It was all so bizarre, but now we're safely back at our own time and Team Rocket's terrible design fell through, we can say all's well that ends well, right? Kyle, you never cease to inspire great adventures. It sure was an exhausting day, though. I better get going. See ya! That's just such a cool event. Very small, but very interesting. And now the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, go withdraw all my money from Mother that we've stored with her throughout the game, uh, just so you can see how much we would have stored just through Johto. But I should note, the other two Pokemon you could get from the Arceus event are Dialga and Palkia. Dialga has the Adamant Orb, which boosts the power of its Dragon Steel-type moves. Dialga itself is a Steel Dragon type, so it is weak against fighting in ground exclusively and immune to poison. Very high special attack and good attack or good physical stats, but its speed's a little low. Roar of Time, though, is one of the best moves, period. Whereas Palkia is holding the Lustrous Orb, which boosts its Dragon and Water-type moves. Water Dragon type, so it's weak against Dragon and only... Uh, actually, only Dragon, as of this gen. Fairy wouldn't be until Gen 6 extraordinarily high special attack and good physical attack as well. I prefer Palkia to Dialga overall, but I prefer Dialga's design, if that makes any sense. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 44, we finish off one last minor event before heading off towards the end. See you guys, then.